So as men, I think we're in a little bit of a predicament. I think that many of us are suffering from betatization. Basically, we're acting like beta males. What does this mean? What is a beta male? Uh, it basically means that you have trouble standing up for yourself. You have trouble uh, going after what you want in life. You are maybe passive. You're very passive aggressive, things of that nature. I think we've all heard the term beta male and alpha male. I don't particularly like to use them a lot. I don't really use alpha male, but I do think that there's a lot of truth in being beta because it's something that I personally have went through and it's something that I overcame. And that's why I'm very passionate about teaching this. Now, how did we become beta? I think that it just happened over a, a period of time over the course of our life. When we were young, maybe it happened by our parents. Maybe we had very overbearing parents. Uh, you know, if you had a very overbearing mother or, or father, I've noticed a lot with men if they have very overbearing mothers is that they turned into like the beta male types, you know, kind of weak, very scared to speak their mind, very scared to stand up to themselves, uh, up for themselves. You know, this is something that I struggled with. Um, both of my parents were kind of like this in a way. And you got to understand that it's not really your fault. It's nobody's fault. It's just a product of your conditioning. And I'm, I really want to teach, I really want to share what I've done to overcome this and how you can break out of this betatization and how you can be more, um, you know, step more into your masculine energy and really live a life that's peaceful to you. That's how you're truly going to find peace and peace within yourself is breaking out of this whole betatization thing because it causes you a lot of anxiety. It causes you a lot of distress and it's probably making you very miserable. It did for me. So the first thing I want to mention is that I think that this is absolutely critical. I think that this should be the most important thing that you do. And it's not, it has nothing to do with being, uh, trying to, trying too hard to be macho or manly because then you're just, you're being, it's basically fake and it's going to come off and feel very inauthentic. It doesn't mean you have to start riding pickup trucks and learn MMA, although you can do those things if that's what you want. Stepping into your masculine energy and breaking out of betatization has nothing to do with, uh, it has, actually doesn't have anything to do with gender. Women suffer from this too. A lot of women have sort of the nice guy syndrome. They're very clingy. Uh, that's a huge trait of being beta is being very clingy and needy, getting way too attached to people and things. So what it really means, other than trying to be so, you know, trying to be more stereotypical masculine is that you're really just acting in a way that is authentic to you. You're not afraid to be your authentic self. You're not afraid to be genuine. You just kind of genuinely stop giving a fuck. But I can't stress enough that this doesn't come so much from trying really hard. It comes from understanding that it's a long process over a long period of time. And there is definitely a healing factor involved. There's a lot of childhood trauma involved in this. So for example, if you look at the the young like athlete, like the kid who had the, the sports dad and the, the healthy family, like the parents were always supporting him with the sports or whatever he was good at, he probably doesn't suffer from betatization because from a young age, he's been encouraged to, you know, he was always told that he's really good at what he does. He always, had, he always got a lot of praise and a lot of, you know, people really liked him and looked up to him. So that's sort of like maybe the alpha male type that you see, like the, the high school athlete, you know, and maybe they have their problems too. But for a lot of us, we didn't have that. Maybe we were kicked down at some point in society by our parents. We were told by our peers or our teachers, maybe we were bullied. It's usually some sort of traumatic event like that, that turns us into quote unquote beta males. And again, I just think beta male is the best way to describe it. Um, you know, I could use more psychological terms. However, I just think that most of you guys who watch me probably understand what that means and you probably resonate with this a little bit. So that's why I like to use the term beta. Okay, so just looking at some of my notes here. So yeah, as I said, embracing a more masculine energy, not necessarily about, you know, fucking as many women as possible and going to try to be the, man, the manliest, you know, uh, alpha male. Because you might not genuinely care about that. I personally don't. I don't have anything to prove to anybody at this point. I'm completely comfortable with myself. I don't care what people think. I don't care what people deem necessarily as feminine or, you know, this is just who I am. This is what I enjoy. And this to me is the most masculine that you could possibly be when you just stop giving a fuck about what society has to say about you, what they think about you. That is how you step into your masculine energy. So it's going to be very unique for you is the point I'm trying to make. Okay, so I'm going to list a couple of things here that I did and that you should start keeping in mind as well. Now, just get, bear in mind, you have to be patient with yourself. It's a very long process. So what I did was, the main thing was every time I noticed that I wasn't acting in a way that was authentic to me, 
Uh, every time my intuition was telling me like, what are you doing? You know, every time I felt weird about the way I was acting and this happens a lot, you know, for a variety of reasons, maybe I said something like, for instance, maybe somebody, you know, um, asked me to do something and I didn't really want to. And I said, yes, anyway, I was like, why did I just do that? That's, that's the betatization right there. And that's, those are those, it's a, a lot of little small things over time that you have to start noticing that you're doing and you have to put awareness on them. Just pay attention, like pay attention every time that happens and just stop doing them. You know, sometimes just putting a lot of awareness on these things in itself is, will kind of cure it very naturally. So if I did notice myself doing something like that, if I noticed that I was maybe um, trying to trying to give somebody uh, too much energy when they weren't giving it back. If I was, you know, not standing up for myself, not being assertive, uh, I would make a point to not let it happen again. And sometimes it would happen again, and that's okay. I would just keep trying, and I didn't give up. And now I'm at the point where I don't. Maybe occasionally, but for the most part, I don't really suffer with from things like that anymore. Um, I'm pretty able to. I'm I'm comfortable with confrontation. So a little bit about me. When I was a teenager, I hated confrontation. I had very low self-esteem. I was afraid to stand up for myself. Uh, always had a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, just generally didn't think very highly of myself. And I literally am an entirely different person. You know, that was like teenage years to early 20s. Uh, now I'm 32 and I literally have broke out of all of that. I'm pretty much as authentic as I can possibly be, pretty confident, you know, I still have my struggles here and there, but for the most part, I've overcame all of it. So it's important to understand that um, although emotions are sometimes like feeling emotions might be seen as very feminine, um, it's the emotions are actually going to be your way out of this because every time the emotions come up of being betatized, whether that's anger, whether that's fear, anxiety, you gaining the ability to be able to just feel the emotions and just to let them go is that's going to be your key. Emotions are pointers. They help us. They're just trying to tell us something and they need to be felt. Watch some of my older videos on the letting go technique to uh, get a better understanding of how this works. This was like absolutely crucial for me. This is what really put me into that, put me into that more masculine energy. Uh, you know, I was just very emotional. I had a lot of emotions and I was trying to suppress them and hide them. I don't, for whatever reason, or I just didn't understand that how I didn't know how important feeling actually was. It's not something that you necessarily have to go blab all your emotions to everybody and tell everybody about this. You got to just get comfortable with really learning to feel them and you will be amazed at how much this transforms your life. Like just pinpoint where you feel the emotion on your body. Every time something happens where maybe you got ghosted or rejected or maybe you got in some sort of argument with somebody, whatever the situation is, Notice what kind of emotion it brings up and just learn to sit with it and feel it and let it, let it go. Um, this is extremely, extremely powerful. I can't stress this enough and it's going to be the key to healing this. So, okay, let me go down a list of about five things that you should start doing. All right, this is what I did. Number one is you have to put yourself first. Um, so I have here not being, a, not being afraid to say no to people, not being taken advantage of, but you also... You know, you don't want to be paranoid to the point where you think everybody is trying to take advantage of you, of you. Every girl is trying to use you. You know, this is what happened when I got heavily into the red pill stuff. I just thought like every girl is just trying out to fuck you over. Most people aren't bad people and they're not trying to take advantage of you. But you don't want to allow yourself to be a doormat. You don't want to be walked over. This will happen with a lot of salespeople. It will happen with a lot of uh, maybe management. It'll happen in dating. Um, you just really have to start paying attention to it and you have to be willing to put yourself first, but also not ignoring completely the needs of others. You don't want to turn into a selfish narcissist. You just want to be able to have the ability to say no to people and not do things that are not aligned with you, not authentic to you. I still struggle with this sometimes. Um, it'll get easier and better over time and you'll feel, you will feel so much better about yourself when you gain the ability to just say fucking no. Number two, go after what you want in life. So a good example of this is why I started this YouTube channel, even though it was very, it was kind of scary, to be honest with you. It wasn't comfortable talking on camera, didn't know what to do. It was all extremely new to me. But I knew that this is something that I really wanted. I knew that I had a message to share with people. And this was something I wanted out of life. I wanted to have a YouTube channel. I wanted to teach. So you have to find what your purpose is. What do you want out of life? Do you want to make a lot of money? Do you want a relationship? 
whatever it may be, you have to be willing to go after it. And you have to understand that I think that the main reason that people don't go after what they want in life is because it seems so far into the future that it just seems impossible. It starts with a lot of small incremental steps. So just understand that. Just ask yourself and be honest. Are you happy with your current predicament? Um, Another example is like, I really just want to start traveling and seeing the world. You know, that's, I've never been a big traveler. My parents were never big travelers. I've been to a couple places. I've been to like Morocco and Paris, um, you know, but I haven't been anywhere in a really long time. And although to be honest with you, traveling to some extent scares me because it's just not something I'm used to, but I've decided to finally start traveling and that's something that I want out of life. It's something that I'm going to go after, even though there might be some fear, even though it might cost money. Uh, you got to be willing to work around those barriers and go after whatever you want. And it could also be, you know, maybe it's that girl you want to talk to. Maybe it's, I don't know, something that you want to try, a sport or something that maybe you feel ashamed of. Maybe you feel embarrassed. You don't feel like you're going to be able to do it. I highly recommend that you go after these things. Um Again, take very small steps in order to get there. Number three is to be decisive when you're making decisions in life. Now, obviously, if it's a life or death decision, uh, life or death decision, that's a very important decision. But when it comes to just the usual everyday stuff, um, just be decisive. If it's like choosing your education or your job or whatever it may be, um, or even stuff smaller than that. Just understand that no decision is a wrong decision. Whatever you do in life, there's always going to be a learning experience. There's always going to be something you gain out of it. There's going to be maybe people you meet. There's going to be some skill that you acquire. Just make a decision and stick with it for a period of time. And if you really don't like it, then you stop doing it and you move on to the other thing. Um, the worst thing that you could do is sit around for too long trying to think about things and trying to wait like, hmm, should I do this? Should I do that? Let me weigh the pros and cons. Don't spend too much time with that. Although that's fine if you want to weigh some pros and cons for things, but just make decisions, make clear cut decisions. This is like a, a pillar of masculine energy. Masculine energy is very stable. It's very like, you know, decisive. It's, it's leading. It's having the ability to just make a decision in life and follow through with it and stick with it. Okay. The next one is standing up for yourself and being assertive. I talked about this one a little bit. If you start small with this, you'll get better over time. Um, you don't have to necessarily be one of those over the top aggressive people. You just have to learn. I mean, I guess I already covered this one, but you really have to learn to just start saying no. You have to learn to speak your mind. That's another big one. You know, that's one that I struggled with when I started doing all of this YouTube stuff and Instagram. I was sometimes afraid like, uh, hmm, what are people going to, what are people going to, how are they going to react to that? Right. You have, you can't be afraid to assert yourself and your opinions and what you firmly and genuinely believe in, but also be open to hearing other people's perspectives on things. Now, also with being assertive, this could be something as simple as, you know, I, I feel like with a good example is a lot of like salespeople and people trying to push shit on you that you, you're not interested in. Don't be afraid to just assert yourself and say, I'm not interested. Don't be afraid to do this at work. Don't be afraid to do this with your friends. You don't ever want to be that people that that guy that, that people just rely on but don't really take seriously. Um, or they don't actually respect you. They just know that you're the yes man, so they're gonna to go to you and you know, ask you to do things because they just know you're gonna say yes. I was there too. It's a horrible way to live. I don't recommend it. So definitely having the ability and the courage to stand up for yourself is another pillar of masculine energy. The last one is having clarity and direction in life. So I guess a lot of these kind of intertwine with each other. These are just the ones that I kind of thought of, you know, off the top of my head for this video. Although there's a lot of nuance with masculine energy. Uh, it goes, you know, there's, there's just a lot. It's very complex, uh, masculine and feminine, feminine energy. Um, but I'm just trying to translate it in a way that it, it's practical for your everyday life. So having clarity and direction in life, being able to understand you know, what you want to do, what kind of man do you want to be? You know, maybe this is uh, a combination of guys that you already look up to and you see how they act and you watch them and you're like, hmm, that's kind of how I want to be. There's nothing wrong with that, having that positive male influence. We all need that. Um, just looking at that and sort of emulating it in an authentic way. You don't want to try too hard to be someone else. I've also dealt with that. You want to 
just sort of watch the way somebody acts and then maybe sort of uh, embody some of those characteristics in your own unique way. Above all, it's like having a life purpose. It's understanding what you want to do with your life. What purpose do you want to? Uh, what purpose do you want to have on this earth? Like all of our, our life purpose is always going to involve helping other people. In my opinion, it's always going to be something that makes the world a better place. I've talked about this in my last video, and it could be a variety of different things. It could be. It could literally be anything. It's just taking something that you feel like you're maybe better at than everyone else, maybe even just more interested in than everybody else, and reproducing that in a creative way where it's going to help mankind. It's going to help maybe a younger generation. You know, that's what I'm trying to do with this channel. This, I feel like what I, the stuff, I, the work I do on here has been my life purpose. And it's, again, it's going to be a very small incremental thing. But my uh, suggestion is, is to take an hour a day and, you know, put time towards whatever that thing may be. It could be writing. It could be uh, some sort of athletic sport. It could be science. It could be history. It could be engineering. It could be spirituality. It could be something. Take that time to obtain knowledge and learn about something that you genuinely really love and maybe consider teaching it to other people in some sort of online format. That's, uh, you know, I know when I look at, when I look at the future, I don't, I don't sit around worrying about the future too much, but when I look at like the type of person I want to be, where, I, you know, what direction I want my life to go in, I know I want it to involve this kind of stuff. Spirituality, meditation, masculine and feminine, feminine energy, semen retention, all of these things that have really helped me. I now want to give that back to the world. That's the clarity that I have. That's the direction in life that I have. So that's, um, that's another one. So understand that, you know, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but masculine energy isn't just something that just males have. Women have it too. It's just that men tend to, to have the more dominant energy is, is masculine. Um, you know, I personally wouldn't date a, a woman who was completely, who had no masculine energy whatsoever and was very uh, sort of in a wounded feminine where she was very passive, you know, very quiet, very submissive. Too much of that is actually unattractive to me. I personally like women who also are kind of similar to me, maybe have more of a balance of the energies where they have their own direction and purpose in life and we're kind of supporting each other. Uh, that's a little off topic, but I just felt like I would add that. You have to understand that there, there definitely is... Now, I never believed this, but until I got into masculine and feminine energy, I didn't, I didn't really think that masculine and feminine was necessarily... A, uh, it's not that I didn't think it was a thing, but I thought it was more of a social construct. But I see that this is very, uh, it, this is very aligned with nature, uh, these energies. And that's why since stepping into my more masculine energy, I feel more intuitive. I feel more genuine and authentic because it's very aligned with nature and who you're meant to be. You know, not all men are going to have a more dominant masculine energy and that's all right. Most probably will. Most of you guys watching me, if you're into the retention stuff or into this type of masculine content, uh, you probably are more in your masculine energy. You know, gay men can have be more in a masculine energy too. It has nothing to do with like gender or sexual orientation. Um, it's just the way. It's it's just being able to to act in a certain way. Like like feminine energy is very is more like I said more passive. So that requires more of like a, a flowing with life, more sort of like meditating, relaxing, being able to maybe follow in a in sort of a healthy way. Whereas masculine energy is more about healthy competition, being able to lead, to, uh, being able to give direction stability, you know, always going after what you want. So just understand that we all have a balance of both of these energies and they're used at different times. But if you're too much stuck in one energy, if you're too much stuck in a masculine energy, you'll be like a, a, a macho sort of alpha male fake, like a Dan Bilzerian, Bilzerian type, which I think is very fake in my opinion. Um, like you're just trying to prove something to the world. But if you're too much stuck in like a very wounded feminine energy, uh, I'm trying to think of an example of that. It will just be, it will be like the girl who's always clinging to a relationship. She can't ever be on her own. She can't make any of her own decisions. She gets stuck with like very toxic type of men. Um, or maybe like an OnlyFans girl who, who, you know, is just constantly putting bodies on her, on the inter putting pictures of her body on the internet for attention. Um, so if you're, if you're too much stuck in one energy, it becomes wounded and it shows as very toxic traits. So you want to have a nice, healthy balance of both. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was somewhat informative, um, you know, completely off the top of my head for the most part. I have some notes here, but, uh, this is just me speaking freely. So 
let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any other further further insights you want to add, if you have experience with this. Um, I love this stuff. I think it's really interesting and I'm probably going to take the channel in. This You're going to see more content on this. So thanks for watching as always and I will see you guys in the next one.